Hey everyone, Boone here from PremiumBeat.com. So today I'm going to give you a quick tour of the new Adobe Premiere Rush. Okay, so first I'm going to give you a tour of the desktop application, and then we're going to go out and shoot something on my phone. I'm going to show you the mobile application. I'm going to show you how these work together. But just be aware that the desktop and the mobile app are pretty much exactly the same. They have all the same features. So everything I show you here on the desktop app is going to be available on the mobile app. Now when you first open up Premiere Rush, you have this nice little tutorial that's going to take you through the program step by step and show you exactly how to get up and running quickly. I'm going to go ahead and click skip tour because we don't need that. Also they provide you with a couple of sample clips here. So if you don't have any actual footage, you can still play around with these clips and get up and running with the program. Now the beauty of Premiere Rush is the fact that everything works from the cloud. And if you look down here, we have a button that says sync with Creative Cloud. Now by default, this is set to on. And over here we also have copy media. Now obviously if you want to save media to your local device, you can just select this and then go to the preferences, tell where you want that media to save. I'm going to go ahead and name my project test. Now if we look over here, we have a media browser so I can pull media from my new project from my local drive, but there's also a cloud option so I could pull straight from the creative cloud files. I have Dropbox and Google Drive as well. So I could really pull from any of these platforms here. But I'm going to go ahead and pick a clip here. And here you see we have the hover scrub feature that you've seen in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is really cool. I can full screen this. Now what's really cool is I can actually trim this clip prior to import, but I'm not going to do that. Now the Rush interface is extremely simple and intuitive. It's kind of like Premiere without all the clutter. So now if we look right in the middle here, we have a nice big program monitor above a simple timeline. Over here to the left, we can add new media. We have a project panel here. We can look at our assets, our, my clip and my sequence. They both have the hover scrub feature. I'm gonna close this. Down here we have some editing tools, some different view tools. And then over here to the right, we have some more refined and advanced tools. What I like about this is it looks extremely simple, but it's really powerful because once you start to look at these tools, there's a lot that it has to offer. So first let's look over here at the program monitor. Here we have some simple playback controls, we have some time code view options. Over here we have a full screen, we can loop playback, and if I open this up you'll see orientation and preview quality options. Now orientation is particularly cool. So let's say I'm, I want to edit something that's destined for Instagram, I could quickly switch to portrait mode, very very cool, or I could switch to square. So that's extremely helpful. If you're trying to do that in Adobe Premiere Pro, it can be you know a lot. You're tra changing your sequence settings or creating sequences. This is a very quick process. So now this timeline down here is extremely simple, but again, it has a lot going on. Here we have three particular editing tools. We can split the clip, we can duplicate it, or we can delete it. Now, what makes this so powerful is the fact that it's designed for really quick editing. So what do I mean by that? Well, any kind of edits you make, any trims you make, they're always ripple deletes or ripple edits. So for instance, watch what happens when I grab the head of my clip here and I drag it out like this. It automatically closes that gap, which is cool. I'm going to undo that. But now watch, if I were to split this clip and I wanted to move this here, it's going to automatically insert it and shift this clip over. I can do that again. Now if I were to trim this part here, you're going to see that it's automatically ripple deleting there, closing that gap. I'm going to go ahead and undo both of those. If you want to see audio, you can enable this expand audio. It's going to show you your waveforms here. And down here, you can toggle on the track controls. This is going to show you the tracks and also show you the controls here. We have visibility. We can mute a track and lock a track. And you can also enable voiceover recording for your audio tracks. So in addition to the basic editing tools here, we have some advanced features up in these panels. We have five different panels. Now let's take a closer look. First we have some titles. This is basically the essential graphics panel inside of Adobe Premiere Pro where you have some templates that you can use here. These preset templates or you can buy some advanced ones from Adobe Stock. Let me grab one of these and bring it in. Now here we have this graphic. If I open up the edit tab here and open up title you're going to see here that it's a simplified version of what we have in Premiere Pro. Next up, we can add some transitions. So I can drag and drop a quick cross dissolve here. Now I have a cross dissolve on my graphic. We also have dip to black and dip to white. 
Next is a very cool panel. This is the color panel. So I'm gonna select my clip here. Now you see we have a bunch of different built-in presets. I can switch between these, very, very easy. But if I have more of an eye and I wanna do something manually, I can go over here to edit. I can manually adjust any of these features here and then I can save it out as my own preset. Now for audio, we have quite a bit going on. First we have this basic tab where I can control the basic clip volume. Now there's a lot going on with this advanced tab. So it's showing us that this, there's an audio type and that it's detected. So if we look at the audio types, we can manually change these. We have three different types. We have voice, music, and other. Now Rush will automatically detect what it thinks your audio type is, and it's gonna apply some preset effects to it. For instance, it's gonna auto duck some of this information and try to give you the best levels possible. Obviously, I can turn this off and manually adjust my levels. And if I'd like to, I can mute a particular channel. Last but not least, we have crop and rotate. Here we can change the position, the rotation. We can also kind of distort if we'd like. We can change the width and the height, and we can also go in here and do some cropping and change the feathering of the edges and the opacity. Also be aware that if you just grab right here in the program monitor, you can do some of the same things. You can change the position and change the size. Once I have an edit that I'm happy with, I can select the share button. That's gonna bring me to the export settings dialog box here. Now Rush is obviously very social media friendly. So if I wanna to upload to some of these social media platforms, I can just turn the switch on I could sign into my YouTube account via the interface here, and then it's gonna to save to my local when I export and then automatically publish to YouTube. If I wanna tweak some of the advanced settings, I can use this drop-down box, and you can see I can mess with whatever I want here. There's even some presets that I could change here if I wanna go with a different resolution. And if I make a lot of changes, I can save out my own preset. But you're gonna see that even the Facebook one here has its own presets as well. Facebook 1080, I can automatically change those resolutions. I can automatically sign in to have it published directly to this particular platform. Very cool. Okay, so there's a quick tour of the interface. Now I'm gonna go out and shoot some footage. Another beautiful day in Paris. So I've come to Paris with my friend Volter and we're shooting some videos here. Now unfortunately for the moment, Adobe has only released an iOS version of the Rush application and an Android version is set for release sometime in 2019. And as I said before, the app interface has all the same tools as the desktop layout. So I can create and publish something entirely from the phone while I'm on location here. So even right here, we have some shots of the Louvre. We're cutting a few together, uploading some to Instagram, uploading some to Facebook. It's really super easy with this app. Voter has even cut a semi-long sequence that I'm gonna to continue to work on when I head back to my apartment. Okay, so now I'm back. I went out and I shot some footage. We did a little bit of cutting and shared some stuff via the application. But now I'm gonna jump back and I wanna cut a longer sequence on the desktop version. So let's take a look at what we can do here. Okay, now when I launch Rush on the desktop here, we can see the project that we created on the mobile app in Paris. And we have a little symbol here. It's showing us that it's on the cloud. And I have a couple of different options here. I can turn the syncing off if I don't want all of my changes now to show up in the cloud. I can turn this off. Or if I want to delete the project at some point, I can delete it everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Now here's the sequence that my friend Voter and I cut while we were in Paris on the application. Everything's here. Everything synced up nicely. And we can even see that if I zoom in here, that our new audio categorizations have taken place. So this is a really cool workflow. If I wanted to work exclusively in the mobile app, I could, or if I wanted to work exclusively on the desktop version, I could, or I can use them both together. So after playing around with this software for a bit, I think it's really fantastic, and I think it would be great for a wide variety of users. For instance, let's say you're new to video editing, this program is perfect for you. Or let's say you're already a Premiere Pro expert, but you don't use all the tools in that particular program, you can use Rush to quickly get the job done. And obviously it's great for daily vloggers, YouTubers, people putting out a lot of content for Instagram, even journalists out in the field, you can get things done quickly with this program. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.